Hi, Father Andy Sly again with another installment of Day by Day in the Word. And today we are looking at the scriptures for Tuesday of the fifth week of Lent. We're continuing our journey toward Palm Sunday, which is this coming Sunday. And uh, we're following John's gospel here in the eighth chapter. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away, and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Of where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I have told you from the beginning. I have much to say about you, in condemnation. But the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own. But I only say what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, some of the passages that we encounter in our Masses are a little less uh, easy to um, understand. Uh, they, they're a little more obscure. And at the same time, if you can imagine how confusing it sometimes is for us, just think about what it was like for the apostles and for the Pharisees and everybody during the time of Jesus, because they lived on the other side of the cross. When we read scripture, we're looking at it through the cross through the resurrection, and for us, through 2,000 years of church history. So we're looking back at Jesus through the cross, and we already know who he is. But these individuals are finding out as they're kind of groping through kind of a darkness, a spiritual darkness that they were living in, who he was. And so he's really being strong and trying to give them ways in which they might understand who he really is. And there's some interesting things that he says here that that I think uh, are are really good to note. Now, obviously, one of the things he's saying is there's a differentiation between where he is going or where he is from and where they are going and where they are from. And again, he's referring to the fact that they have refused to the gospel. They have refused the good news that he is bringing about uh, the salvation of the world, and, and to believe in him would then set them on a different pathway in a, in a different direction with a different destiny. And it's interesting in that interchange, he says that the reason that they're going to die in their sins, he says, for if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. Now, we have to remember the fact that the I am that he's speaking here is not the fact that you believe that I exist, that I am, that I'm here, but rather that I am. I am God the Son. I am the Messiah. Back in the time of Moses, when Moses encounters the Lord, and one of the things that he asked the Lord, he says, when they ask me who it is that has sent me, who do I say? And he says, tell them, I am sent you. 
And so that was the name that God gave himself at that moment as an explanation to Moses. I am. And that, that phrase, I am, is, is important because it speaks of the present nature of God at all times, past, present, and future. He is always I am. He is always here. He is always the same. Nothing ever changes. He is who he is. And here, Jesus is saying the same thing. He's saying, for if you do not believe that I am, I'm connected with the great I am. And in fact, uh, through scripture, uh, you'll find in the Old Testament that the Jews continue when speaking of God personally, they, they call him by the name I am. And in Hebrew, it's Yahweh. Um, and it's never spoken. The name Yahweh is never spoken by the Jews. It is such a hallowed name that they refuse to speak it. Instead, what they do is they substitute the word Adonai, which means Lord. So one of the keys that you can see in the Old Testament in your Bible, whenever you see the word Lord in all capital letters, that is actually the word Yahweh in the original language. And it's being translated Lord for our benefit because we do not speak that name uh, in the reading of Scripture. But Jesus here is again saying that they are to believe that he is. They are to believe that he is who he says he is. And so they said to him, who are you? It's an interesting question because he has said time and time and time and time again, who he was. In fact, that's his response is what I told you from the beginning. And the interesting thing here is that there's a little bit of uh, speculation in terms of the translation of that particular verse. And it could be that what he really said there was, I am who I told you from the beginning. Again, going back to the I am. So he's really making it clear that they need to understand who he is as they encounter him. That it is not just about him defending himself, but rather that they will take it upon themselves to truly embrace who he is. And actually, he tells them that there's going to be a time when they will, in fact, know who he is. They're going to know the I am. And he makes it very clear. When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize I am. In just a short time from the utterance of these words, Jesus will carry his cross to Golgotha, and there he will be nailed to the cross, and he will be lifted up. And in that lifting up, the things that Jesus will go through at that point, the things that he will do, And the things that will happen after that point will, in fact, prove the I am of who he is. Just think about it, that when Jesus is lifted up on the cross, remember the centurion, in looking upon Jesus there nailed to the cross, exclaims, truly, he is the Son of God. And at the time when he voluntarily gives up his life on the cross, And says, it is finished. All of heaven and earth go through this excruciating uh, moan. There's thunder and lightning in the temple. The veil that hides the holy of holies, hides the, the, uh, uh, the mercy seat, hides the tabernacle of the Lord. All of that, this veil breaks in two. From the top to the bottom, it's torn. And so that people can actually have access, they will see the Holy of Holies, something they were forbidden to look upon. That's because the Holy of Holies is truly Jesus, the one who has died on the cross. So they opened it to show them that this is no longer the place where the glory dwells, but the glory dwells with the Lord who has now been lifted up, has died, and will rise again. From that time on, The I am of Jesus will be demonstrated time and time and time and time again. 
Isn't it encouraging at the end of this passage to realize that just in this exchange that he had with the scribes and the Pharisees, that it says that many came to believe in him. How challenged we are today, again, to sometimes recognize the fact that we have to be those that acknowledge Jesus for who he is, that we need to be among those who truly need to embrace the fullness of who Jesus is, that we might encounter him in a beautiful and divine way. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, thank you for another visit here by video. I pray that you'll have a great day, that you'll keep safe and keep healthy, and I'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.